welcome back. And we're moving into our first conversation for today as we talk about uh, the agricultural sector in Belize and, of course, the upcoming National Agriculture and Trade Show. We have with us on set the CEO in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Forestry, and the Environment, Jose Alpuche. And we're joined by the chairman of the National Agricultural Trade Show Committee. Good morning and Good morning. welcome. Good morning and thanks for having us. Good morning. So before we move into the fun activities of this weekend, of, it is a great time for us to be able to have uh, a reflection on a very important industry in this country. Um, I can perhaps start off with what's happening in the citrus industry because that's the most recent uh, and talk we know that at this point, uh, the potential way out, uh, the Citrus Growers Association and CPBL uh, have been trying to decide how they can overcome the financial troubles that they're in. They're looking at floating a bond, I believe. That's, that's the way forward. Talk to me from the government perspective as to your input to this, to this issue. I think uh, it's not so much the it's plant world nursery, which that's is a subsidiary of the CJ. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not the entire industry as a whole. It's only, it's only plant world that looking at, at this floating this bond to raise uh, resources. Um, it is something that we're supportive of. Mm -hmm. um, they have been, well, the sector has been struggling because of cumulative effects of, of at least the last decade yeah. as it relates to HLB and what was in, in, in effect a sustained um, uh, wrangling within the industry. Having said that, though, uh, production has dipped as we expected it to occur. Um, but we also have new plantings in the ground that should begin, in a, well, from now, begin yielding new, new volumes. Mm -hmm. What we have this year, too, though, is a, an increase in fresh fruit export. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something that we're not necessarily supportive of in the sense that uh, we believe that the, the fresh fruit should go to, to actual processing. Uh, however, it is something that, that is at the decision of the, the, the farmer himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but as it relates to plant world nursery, the, the bond is being floated specifically for them. Yes. And plant world is, as I said, just a subset of the CGM. Yeah. Now, if we look at the challenges of the industry, and I appreciate that you pointed out two issues because we know that there have been quite a bit of infighting as well between uh, the production group and, of course, those who grow. Um, and then looking at the issue of citrus greening as well, which affects uh, citrus industry, the citrus sector across the globe. But there have been quite a few efforts made in being able to mitigate the effects. Why have we not been able to see any results of, of these uh, efforts? But we are seeing results. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing results, as I said earlier, there are new groves coming on stream. Mm -hmm. What had happened is that they, at the onset earlier, uh, 2005, 2006, when uh, there, the industry was in real difficulty, yeah. um, that investment, investments were not going in. Mm -hmm. Um, but subsequent to that, investments went in, and now we will begin yielding. We will begin seeing the, 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 the yields from that. Keep in mind that what you plant today, you don't harvest until four or five yeah. years' time. Yeah. Um, so there is quite a si significant lag behind in terms, of, in terms of throughput. I'm happy to say that, that, that relations within the industry is much improved, mm -hmm. uh, which we're happy for because that brings confidence to the sector. Yeah. And that is what we need to drive continued investment in that. And in, in that respect, we're very supportive of it. Yeah. Actually, uh, last week, I believe it's, it's Belagro had a conference on, on greening mm -hmm. uh, with participants to look at, at other possibilities. So uh, quietly, um, there's quite a bit happening uh, mm -hmm. in, in the background. How confident are you that we will be able to see a bounce back of the industry? Very confident. Uh, will it, will it uh, go back to, 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 to the Hades? I, I believe so. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, Marlene, too, the difficulties within processing, it's not new. Mm -hmm. uh, the processing have changed hands over the years several times. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you will recall that the last buyout from Del Oro mm -hmm. uh, was actually done, if I recall right, for a dollar US plus assumption of, of all the debt that, that, that was there with the processing. So it's not nothing new that this sector is, is continuously uh, uh, facing challenges. They have always 
overcome the challenges. Even with HLB, we're very confident that they will overcome the challenges now. Now, oftentimes over the years, we've heard of, of looking at value-added products and also uh, diversification of uh, the, the, uh, the produce itself. Uh, is that still the direction that you think we need to go? There's this notion that uh, it should be a juicing business, mm -hmm. again, which we're supportive of. Um, there, are, there are opportunities there. They're already doing a bit of, of, of pineapple, although pineapple globally is, is very depressed right now because of, of, um, of investments in primarily Costa Rica and, and Mexico. Prices mm -hmm. are, are a bit low, but there are opportunities that we're, we're working together with the, the industry to, to, to look at new avenues. Mm -hmm. um, diversification of the production base um, beyond citrus too for, the, for small farmers in particular is still um, uh, quite a, 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 an undertaking for us because it's hard to, to transition from one crop mm -hmm. to the next, but it's something that we're working very um, closely with the farmers. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I wanna get from citrus looking into uh, the shrimp uh, industry and the challenges they have there. I think it's important. We don't talk very much about agriculture and I think people only see them segregated. But when we talk about uh, what are some of the primary income earners for the country, agriculture is so important. Of course, it's been outdone by tourism. But uh, the challenges at the shrimp farm started with the bacterial infection and it seems that there's been a struggle in being able to recover from that. Talk to us about that. Let me first, there's this notion as if though the industry is not doing enough. And I have one question for those selling that idea. Mm -hmm. Anybody with a multi-million dollar investment in any business mm -hmm. will do all they can to protect it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, the growers are doing that and we're trying to help them as much as possible to, to achieve uh, recovery. Again, just as you said with HLB, um, this is a global issue. It is not unique to Belize. We have countries with much more resources having tremendous uh, uh, difficulties recovering from, from this particular disease uh, outbreak. Um, we had a setback uh, last year, late last year in one of the, the hatcheries and that really put back uh, stocking of the ponds considerably. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, there are alternatives to, to, to that. We've already found alternatives to that and stocking is, uh, is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Actually, by later this year, we'll begin seeing uh, increased production from the sector. Mm -hmm. This is something just like HLB, there is no silver bullet, there is no cure. Uh, it has a lot to do with management practices and protocols that you, that you um, employ at the farm level. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes quite a bit of a very steep learning curve at the farm level. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the, the difficulty we're, we're facing. They've had quite a bit of success with, with uh, new techniques. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they fermented uh, soy and other feeding methods, which make the economics of running a shrimp farm much better. It's to get over the threshold of management um, of the hatchery production of the PLs and stocking, which we're on the road to, do, to, to that now. Mm -hmm. How many shrimp farms do you have nationally? Um, there is an increase in, in number. I believe it's 13 right now. Mm. And they're concentrated in the south. And there is a new operation up north, all the way up north too. Okay. And one close, close by here in um, in um, Belize. Belize. Yeah. The papaya industry, um, Futabomba, it was in yeah. Corozo. It has closed. Is there any move on the horizon to have a replacement? That's a lot of jobs that have gone. We're still South. exporting papaya, coming out of uh, out of Little Belize area. Uh, a minute operation, but they export mainly green as opposed to what Frutabomba was doing. Frutabomba moved out of the country because uh, they found um, more economical um, operations in, in the DR and in Guatemala. Cheaper labor, less uh, social cost than, 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 than is entailed here in Belize. Frutabomba also too, while they had their packing facility, which was property, uh, they were leasing a lot of the land. Uh, and when you have an investment like that, it is somewhat transient. Mm -hmm. And they found greener grasses as it relates to cheaper wage rates, etc., cetera, in, in elsewhere, and, and they've moved on. Uh, we're looking very closely at uh, replacement um, options, diversification options for 
for the Corozal and the Orange Walk District. You know, last year we've been, we, we ran um, programs improvement for onion, uh, honey, sheep, and we have a few others that we're planning to do. It's easier said than done. As I said earlier, diversification at the farming level uh, is not uh, um, very easy, but we have a committed team. Is it a team. resistance to change, a lack of knowledge of techniques? What, what are, what's the main challenge that we're a talking about? A mixture of everything, yeah. quite frankly. Um, and from papaya, which, which, which you, where you started, papaya was, in effect, laborers being employed. What we're trying to do is to, is to make these people entrepreneurs in their own right, mm -hmm. to get into farming themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, to say we will bring another, uh, and I'll use the term, maquiladora agriculture sector, ag agriculture industry, I don't think that is the solution. What does that mean? Well, that you could come, you, you, you utilize the, the, the space, uh, um, and then when, it's, when you find greener pastures, you move. Maquiladora is, is a term used mainly like for your sewing industries and the rest of it, which are transient globally. And we see more and more of that in, in agriculture now. And that is the model under which they came in. They mm -hmm. stayed a long time, I must say, mm -hmm. and they did provide a lot of employment. But I don't think we're looking at another Maquiladora uh, investment. We need a far deeper reform in Corozal and Orange Walk. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know if you're talking about the North, uh, their bread and butter is looking at the sugar industry. Uh, and uh, this is a very important year in terms of uh, being able to function outside of the preferential trade agreement. Um, I know that the government does keep conversations going with both the cane farmers and uh, the millers, and, and usually it's a testy relationship. Things seem to be quiet for now. Um, talk to us about how you feel that the sugar industry is going to fare off under this new arrangement. Marlene started talking about sugar from the WTO yes. days in 1995, 96. It is from then we knew what we, where we would be today. Yeah. Um, and we've been pushing reform for literally for decades. Um, we are at, at what in effect is a threshold uh, uh, moment where the, the EU reform is, is more or less uh, complete. Um, add to that the, the difficulties of Brexit, mm -hmm. and we have quite a challenge on our hands. We've maintained very quiet, very constant dialogue with the, with, with the sector, both, both um, um, at the farming level, but also at the milling uh, side, as you, as you said. Um, and we're pushing, uh, they recognize where, where we are right now. At the moment, what we're trying to do is literally convert from a raw sugar export base to a um, direct consumption sugar. Which means the sugar we already right. will right. eat. Right, what we already, already can eat. Yeah. But why? Because we send raw sugar, uh, there's only a few refineries that that could go mm -hmm. to. But if we sell direct consumption sugar and we convert the industry to direct consumption sugar, then we can export virtually mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, because then it's something that can already be, be, be consumed. Um, so that's the move right now. In that process, we need, obviously, markets uh, well beyond Belize. Um, we're working very closely with the uh, Ministry of Trade and Industry mm -hmm. itself um, to push um, changes in the, in the CARICOM mm -hmm. uh, regime, uh, in effect, to, to, to ring fence that market for um, Caribbean industries, including Belize. It's not only Belize, it would be Belize principally Belize, Guyana, and, and Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And we're working together in that to secure the regionally, the, the single market. Um, but beyond that, there's also opportunities that, that exist elsewhere, yeah. including in Europe. Now, we know you work along with trade to be able to, to attempt to get inroads into uh, different countries and, and allow us better access. Uh, you spoke of Brexit. We were trying to speak to the EU representative when she was here to kind of get a better understanding as to how it would affect trade. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to really speak specifically of it. It's still a process that's unfolding. But one of the things we do know is that where you enter the European Union is important. And, and from my understanding, we uh, will need to look at working at another inroad versus uh, the UK. And, and that can pose some challenges as well. I believe the UK has clarified that they will be extending the EPA uh, benefits okay. um, to, well, beyond, be, beyond their exit um, from, from the EU. So we will maintain similar 
uh, market access to the to the UK as we do to the EU. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. The real issue, for though, now. yeah, for now, the real issue though is what the UK does with third countries. Mm -hmm. In terms of, uh, we already have a balance in, or uh, we already have know what, where the, the the EU market um, uh, will 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 settle for the for, for the foreseeable future in terms of uh, sourcing of, of products. What we don't know will happen with the EU, and again, specifically to sugar as one of the main commodities. Will they offer increased access to your larger producer? That is where the challenge. Uh, uh, lies. I think what is important to understand it is not that we are losing preference. It's that others, in many instances, that are more competitive than 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 we are, are actually gaining market access. So there is this crowding out effect yeah. of the marketplace. That is the what happened. The cheaper beet in, sugar. That's, that's what happened in, in in the wider European Union, and that is what could again occur. Uh, even deeper reforms in the UK, and that is a real issue of concern right now. Mm -hmm. I wanted to switch a little bit, if I could, um, to the issue of food security. Um, and more from a more grassroots level in terms of, we have seen over the past five years some embarrassing shortages. Limes, uh, onions. <laughs> onions, potatoes. Um, we're about to celebrate um, in a few days agriculture and trade. And for the common person looking at these things, um, they're wondering, is there a competition between importers and producers, and are the local producers losing, if that is so? Um, it is not um, really shortages. These things are all um, seasonal. They're cyclical every year. There's a level of predictability to know when onions will come in, give or, or, and when they will end, give or take a, a couple uh, uh, weeks. And it is managing that process that usually hits the news. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the mismanagement of that process. Uh, it's the mismanagement of that process. Well, there's competing interest. There's only so much you can manage in terms of markets. At the end of the day, market is, is supply and, and, and demand. And what happens with us is that when supply and demand are not met at the, at the um, official market, then you know what happens. The door is... They, they, there's they, a failure. It, no, no, there's, a, there's quite a bit coming across uh, illegally. Yes. And that is the real problem. Added to that, we have never had, and that's why we're trying to develop very quickly, uh, standards um, where some farmers expect that they will get premium price for an onion that size, and then when the market is closing, an onion that size, and they still want <laughs> premium price. You, the consumers, decide otherwise. So it's not as easy as it sounds to, 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 to balance it out. Some people are actually mischievously amplifying the difficulties that we're having. And we had it a couple years ago where we sat down with onion producers and agreed on a price with them and the importers. And then when they go back up north, uh, things change. Um, that's not very helpful. We really need to, to introduce a bit of market predictability. One of the things we'll be doing as it relates to this, uh, and I, I will take this opportunity, is that we'll, this year we'll Actually, next month, we'll start a census. We'll start a, a georeferencing and developing a farmer and farm registry. We've already developed the, 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 the computer programs and apps, local, I must say, a, a team out of Corozal, yeah. excellent team out of, out of Corozal has actually helped us develop the, the data system. So we'll begin georeferencing. We'll begin doing data collection, which the ministry has never done as deep as we will do now in which we're able to achieve what is called forecast supply balance. And that should give us far more information to be able to balance the market needs and, and, yeah. and supply far easier. Will this be coupled? Because I always, we, we hear the story, and you're right, when there's the shortage, then we get the mm -hmm. stories. And we also get some of the background information. And one of the things that we know, uh, or we've been told has been taking place is looking at uh, what people are allowed to import as well. Is there going to be an assessment, or is this a plan eventually, to look at what we really need to be exporting and what, what we really need to be importing and what can be locally produced? That is, there. That is why we have a, 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 a list as it relates to quantitative uh, restrictions. There, there are restrictions we have because of sanitary and, and phytosanitary mm -hmm. reasons, but then there's also quantitative restrictions to try to give the farmers uh, uh, a break mm -hmm. 
yeah. um, to be able to, to market their produce on the market, giving them, an, uh, in effect, an open market. Um, and it is that balance. I must say, we are very encouraged by the response we're having from, from the farmers. They're now understanding much more that they need to produce uh, uh, quality. As, as I've said every time I've come on this show, quality, consistency, supply, and competitive price. If you can meet that, you will not have contraband. Mm -hmm. Because that is what drives the contraband. It's that gap in the market. But we're getting there very, very uh, 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 slowly, but we're getting there with the farmers understanding the market uh, uh, dynamics. In addition to that, we have a, a we built a purpose-built farmers market in in um, in Belmopan at the showgrounds to be able to 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 I should say beta test some of the our, our dialogue or relations with the farmers. And yeah. once we we can perfect that, we will roll that out elsewhere in the country so that the farmers have direct access to the market. Now let's. I, I'm, I'm sure you have had ample conversations with farmers on the ground. What are some of their challenges that they're bringing forward to you? Um, marketing is, is, is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, we have always had a, a middleman marketing system. Um, again, we will, be, we will have two avenues we will address it. Mm -hmm. One is with the data collection, the census that we're doing right now, a, a parallel program to that will be a, a market information system mm -hmm. so that you could see if onions available in or in Joac, in Corzal, in Cayo, wherever, in real time, so we could able we could able to, to, to match buyers with with actual producers, actual farmers. That's one element. And then the other element, as I said, are the actual physical markets. We have a bit more work to do in that respect, to, to have it uh, have a, a, a proper system, proper functioning system. Yeah. Um, because what we've had in the past, we've had many attempts at farmers market, but then they end up turning into closed stalls and all sorts of things. <laughs> we don't want to make that same mistake again. <laughs> now, and, and this brings us back to uh, the weekend activities. I think one of the things that we know takes place around this time too is the Farmer of the Year Awards. And this is really an opportunity. And we hear it more and more globally. People are talking about backyard farms. People are talking about uh, securing their own food source, growing organic. Um, so there is more of an interest. Uh, what do you find to be the level of interest in Belize for people to move into uh, creating farms for production outside of maintaining their own families? Um, we have several programs that we're, that we're um, working on. Uh, one of the overall, the, the, the medium to long term problems that we have is an aging um, mm -hmm. farming population. So as you know, uh, over the last few years, we've been taking World Food Day to, to schools throughout the country yeah. to begin exposing young people to the, to the virtues of agriculture, both as a way of life, but also to as a business. Mm -hmm. And that's been fantastic. In addition to that, we've started um, this uh, school gardening program. Mm -hmm. uh, we started it in, in the Toledo district. That seems to be mushrooming. And actually, Gary takes lead in, in yeah. setting those up. But that's been mushrooming throughout the country and right now we actually have more demand than we can than we can for um, school gardens for school gardens good um, awesome. and with that we're exposing kids at the, at the primary school level yeah. to again the virtues of of agriculture later this year um actually early uh, last week or a week before we've been in dialogue with the international fund for agriculture development um ifad uh, in in rome about a program to assist small farmers. Um, about two weeks ago, they approved a, a loan um, to the sector. There's a counterpart that where uh, they will be approaching the Green Climate Fund. And uh, we should very soon begin implementing a, a, a 20 million US program to help small farmers. It will be in 23 communities mm -hmm. trying to make um, um, farming um, climate resilience, okay. climate resilient, yeah. but also to it would be more um, a, a um, going into a community and dealing with the issues at a community level okay. in, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of water supply, in terms of markets, in terms right. of even organizing the farmers. So we're really taking a different approach to what we've done uh, in the past. And this, this program we're putting 
quite a bit of effort into it because we believe since we're doing a holistic approach, yeah. the results should be far more um, uh, sustainable than, than what has happened in the past. You know, we've interviewed quite a few interesting farmer of the years, and uh, you know, I've always loved the fact uh, that there is, there, some are young, and, and there's a special award for, for the youngest as well, female, and uh, I always recall there was one young man who came that at first he didn't want to move into agriculture because he saw how hard his father worked, but what he developed was his own system um, to be able to simplify it and also using machines, which his father was resistant to. But I use that as an example to talk about your school farming program and how do you encourage, especially the younger population who really prefer to just be glued to some kind of electronic <laughs> rather than being outdoor, uh, to, to take the jump into one trying and potentially look into this as a career opportunity. Well, um, good morning. Mm -hmm. the, the school garden programs are um, really driven at the school level. Yeah. Um, as CEO Alpuche um, mentioned a while ago, the, the level of demand or request that we have been getting over the last uh, couple of months has been significant. So we have a bigger list than we have funding for. Yeah. Fortunately, we have been able to um, acquire funding from a number of agencies that, that is also seeing the, 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 the potential for this. So what we start off with is those schools that express an interest, um, normally in writing, they would write to us and, and so we have a, <coughs> a database of those yeah. and then we try to match the funding. So what that allows us to do is that when we go to the school to do the, the, the initial visit and, this, um, and look at what is on the ground to be able to design the gardens, there, there is already an interest. Yeah. Um, a lot of time from a group of students and, and, and maybe a teacher or two. So that is something that, that, that for me um, really drives the process once we see that happening on the ground. Um, I, could remember, I could remember, for example, working with Stella Mars. When I got there, I was amazed uh, uh, about what the kids were able to do on their own without the, the necessary resources. So when we come in and, and that funding is, is then injected into, into the school campus, it, it is only to drive it to another level. Something is already happening on the ground. The, the traction is already there, um, which is quite different from us trying to go into a school and say, hey, agriculture is good. Would you want to look at it? Yeah. That one, that, that part of it is a little bit difficult. So when we go in and the interest is there, the teacher um, and the staff is already um, making a movement on the ground. We just come in to provide the support. But that doesn't go much further than appreciation value. It's like art. I mean, you do a card, you paint, and that's it. Um, what do you want to achieve from it? Do you want to get a couple more farmers? What do you want to say that this was a successful you, program? You know, uh, we have a very unique program for the, actually I was told in, in the region where we've partnered with the, with the police department. Mm -hmm. uh, this started with a program with, with Howell Gillette and Bomo Pan. Um, and now this, you're bringing it to Belize City, yes, right? Yeah. Uh, where he has actually been able to, to attract uh, a funding for youth at risk um, uh, programs. We, we, we've collaborated now for a few years under this youth engaged in agriculture. Um, we are now about to attract regional funding for it because it's been very successful. Um, and we will have uh, a program from Billy City and Bamopan, Youth at Risk. It is amazing to see and to hear from um, them, from, the, from uh, O.C. Gillette and others within the police department, the perspective change that this does to the, to, to the youth in where they operate. And they've seen, literally we've planted a seed uh, uh, with them in that they take it outside. Yes, we hope to attract uh, new farmers, but the only way they will see the value of it is if they're exposed to it. Mm -hmm. And we can't attempt to expose it to them when they're 17, 18, when they've already been, been attracted. So it's best we go at the, at, the, at the lower level. Well, you're facing a bigger problem because you today there's a disconnect between what I eat and how it gets there. Um, uh, culturally, you know, technology seems to be taking the place of humans um, in, the, in every industry. And I, I think it's a bigger challenge than to attract people to do farming. Because one of the issues is actually land tenure. I can't plant, I can't become an entrepreneur if I don't have land. That's not exactly true, you know. Mm -hmm. There are farming techniques and when you go to the showgrounds over the weekend, you should look at the aquaponics and some of the other displays that we have. We have them there on scale, but literally you can convert this studio into a productive farm. Oh. Um, but that is where we need to go. It is yeah. not, 
using and, technology. And, uh, using technology and what we're exposing the kids to is the science behind this. Agriculture is no longer a, a machete on a horse. Yes, that's a part of agriculture which we appreciate and we value and it will always be there. But the technology is advancing so fast and that's the technological uh, uh, leap that we, 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 we need here in, the, in, the, in, the, um, in, the, in Belize. So it's not to go and convert a, a, a 65-year-old farmer into, into, a, in, into a, the new farmer. It's more to start at a lower level where we can begin to, to inculcate in them the value of it and then the business side of it. And they, they will move. I'm, I'm very confident of, of it. Huh? Yeah. You have, um, for example, you have some notions that, are, that is associated with agriculture. Mm -hmm. And the kids will tell you, um, it's back breaking, mm -hmm. it's being out in the mm -hmm. sun, mm -hmm. and everything else that goes along with it. Some of these gardens that we're talking about is less than 30 square feet, 40 square feet. Just it's what compact. are they growing? Uh, they grow every uh, vegetable crop that you could think about. Yeah. There's cassava, there's cocoa, there's planting that we try to put into it. What we do with the garden is that we try to mix a little of the old-fashioned agriculture with a little bit of technology yeah. so that the kids could see, all right, it's not what grandpa was doing in terms of walking with a bucket of water yeah. for, for a couple of minutes. So <laughs> one part of the garden, they need to water by hand. The second part of the garden has irrigation. a drip irrigation system so that you could see how that functioned. One mm -hmm. part of the garden is open, another part has protected agriculture, meaning it has a netting and the crop grows indoor. So for themselves, without us having to tell them, they look at the benefits of that. Uh, then thirdly, what we do is once the garden is up and running, we prepare seedlings that we then give to the kids to take home. So they're learning one part of it at, at school and they're also taking okay. the idea of backyard gardening. We, we really want to invite you all from the studio, all the, including the, the, the camera guys and so to come out over the weekend and look at the little garden that we have. We have a, a year-round oh, garden sorry. at the, at the um, showground specifically yeah. to to expose uh, uh, kids to it. One thing you don't have to worry about is people coming to the agriculture. Uh. <laughs> Just guide them to the right direction right. of the farm. You know, and, but, and, and we're going to get to that because I know you have quite a number of activities lined up that are so interesting. But I just I wanted to, to just push just one step further in terms of looking at climate change. We were joking about weather in April. This is not typical April weather. Um, we saw the rainy season, not so rainy. We saw what should have been uh, a less active rainy season being more rainy. So much is changing in terms of what used to be a fairly predictable season in the country. How have you seen this affect the agricultural sector? I think we'll be here till midday, Marlene. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> let me, so let me, let me, let me. And we need to get to the show. Yeah, we will, um, yeah. Look, this is one of the one of the um, key areas that we're we're concentrating on. Yeah. Right now, we're working with the World Bank to do a climate smart um, agriculture profile for the country. Um, we've talked about some macro level issues that we're doing doing a topogra proper topographic map of the of the country because right now we have a topographic map of one in twenty, which is not good for any planning. We're getting two lighter. What is that? In terms of very twenty meters, you get a. a, a, a a meter elevation, mm -hmm. which doesn't give you enough information. Yeah. But we're getting um, LIDAR images uh, done through, through uh, the climate change um, office uh, to do a proper topographic map of the country, to employ, again, technology mm -hmm. in terms of water planning. At the core of all of this will be water management going forward. Uh, so we're planning for that. We're working, as I said, uh, the World Bank and, and SEAT out of, out of uh, Colombia, they're doing this profile for us. We're working with SIAT, actually one of our technicians uh, traveling to Panama today mm -hmm. to meet with SIAT on, on other long-term um, uh, programs aimed specifically at, at climate change. Another issue though that we need to address, and only yesterday we were in, in meetings with some of the IFIs, is the issue of financing adaptation. Because right now our commercial banks um, have not been responsive and I'm not asking for cheaper loan just for cheaper loans. They have loans. like a stereotypical system, right. which is you just pay every month. The 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 best way to 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 insulate yourself from climate change is to mitigate it. Mm -hmm. The best way to mitigate it is to invest mm -hmm. in whether it's irrigation, whether it's drainage, whether it's covered structure. But then incentivize those those investments, whether it's mm -hmm. an irrigation system for my farm. Give it a give us at at five percent. Give us at six percent. Why? Because then it's still actually 
insuring. It's mm -hmm. a form of insurance to your other loans that you would give for crop insurance, uh, for, for crop um, um, uh, planting, etc. Um, and we need a far more diversified uh, um, funding mechanism for, for the sector. So you're not talking about special line, a special line of credit for farmers. You're talking about a different structure. I'm talking about a special line to, to, to push climate adaptation. Mm -hmm. The other discussion that we're having. But before you turn, sorry to cut you. But before we turn, before we third party it, put it to the private institutions, aren't the institutions available by governmental agencies I'm talking about, or, or friendly the DFC, DFC yeah. National Bank. Why, why do you think that you can't control third parting it to the private banks when I have DFC and National Bank? DFC is, is actually already have some yeah. programs along those lines. So expanding and, it? And I don't, want to, I don't want to put them in, in a spot, but they're one of the banks that have actually been uh, doing uh, their best to try to mitigate some of the impacts. Remember, we've had crop losses in, 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 in the not so uh, distant pass um, and they're doing their best to utilize um, uh, their rules to be able to provide the buffer to farmers but what I'm saying is that the bulk of the lending is actually third party the mm -hmm. bulk of the lending is actually the commercial banks they have to become smart and understand that I will protect my return if I give the farmer incentivize the farmer to be able to yeah. to mitigate his risk whether as I said irrigation drainage protective structure whatever it is uh, Mm -hmm. are, are there any tax incentives in, in, in looking at irrigation? Because yes. an irrigation system yes. is expensive, we can just loosely say. Government, uh, you will recall after, uh, about three years ago, after the drought, um, we had in 2013, it was rain for a couple of months all the way into January and then severe drought. <laughs> and I recall uh, the, the Prime Minister had given the assurance that he would allow um, uh, irrigation equipment to come in um, tax-free and he's made good on that and that continues we need to formalize a bit more of that so it's 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 changing some of the the, 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 the yeah. structures to incentivize the investment along those lines can I bridge one other thing I know we're going to get into yeah. the trade show but I couldn't sit here and not ask uh, two questions in terms of the fishing industry um, I'm curious to know whether or not the the fishing incursions that we've been having, mm -hmm. that we see on television, does that affect our fishing stock significantly? <laughs> I don't want to comment quite a bit on that because that's more my colleagues, that, that's uh, Dr. Dr. Cho's um, uh, role. It falls in your ministry? Yeah, Fisheries? it's my ministry, but there's two CEOs within, yeah. within the ministry. Oh, interesting. Um, but there's yes, no it does. There's no coordination between the two yeah, of yeah, 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 of course. But yes, it does. It, it does yeah. impact on, on um, on, on what it is, but if you think policing the the the, the, the border <laughs> is, <bad. laughs> is expensive, try doing it on water. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I know that they're exploring again technological advances in terms of, of vessel monitoring systems and other um, area, uh, areas of work that they're doing to try to mitigate mm -hmm. mitigate that that problem. And in terms of the forestry, that does that fall on the earth? That, that's that's uh, Dr. Choto. Yeah. But can you tell us, I know you, you coordinate and you surely exchange notes, it's one ministry, mm. so you must be, have some coordination. Um, in terms of the progress of hardwoods, I mean, we had a problem in the past with um, rosewood. Mm -hmm. um, have we solved that completely? And is there any new opportunities in the forestry? Um, there will always be a challenge on those resources. What you have not heard recently is any major incursion because the, the, the forestry department and the ministry has been doing quite a bit to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. From the issue of fines, uh, confiscation, and better monitoring. Huh? So it's improved considerably over the last, uh, over the last few years. Yeah. All right, so let's shift over to the agri show. <laughs> and I, it's funny because I see people online saying it's not agri show, it's agri. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the foundation of this event, and it's grown so big over the past couple of years, you know, what, what is the estimate of the people who come through to the compound? Uh, last year, for 20, 2016 was around 37,000 visitors. That does not include concessioners and their staff. Uh, 2017 was 38,000 and we are preparing for a little jump in that number as well. Wow. Okay. So we know we'll have the people, 
And I, and I want to ask this because we are talking about agriculture. As much as the trade component is a great pull, how do you use the opportunity to showcase all the different opportunities that exist in agriculture? Mar Marlene, if I could start by saying what we had set out to do quite a few years ago is actually to zone the ground. Yeah. Where you have a, an effect or entertainment area, we have no uh, zoned or administrative zone where mm -hmm. we've already moved a half of the ministry staff out there. We're, we'll begin building a new building uh, late, uh, uh, probably next month mm -hmm. and we will move the entire ministry out there. So that's our mm -hmm. entertainment area with the rides, the rest of it, there's the administrative zone with all the offices. We have an, uh, uh, what we would call the display zone which is the main stage and that area with the, with the, um, the Crickside mm -hmm. entertainment stage. And then we have the market, and it's literally being zoned with fences. Okay. Wow. So we're we're defining, um, we're we're putting much more definition to the to the experience at the at the grounds. And as Gary will tell you, uh, one of the things we've been pushing um, very hard is to return the show to a family event. Mm. We've taken all the bars and put them to the <laughs> back, and you want to go there, go into that zone. Yeah. You want to stay where, where, where kids and the display and the agriculture, yeah. there's also a zone for that. And that has worked very well. We've seen, we've put in seating, we've seen people come. Uh, what we found out before, people used to come, get what they want and they leave. Now yeah. they stay for the day. So although you'll have 37, 40,000 people, uh, they stay. Yeah. And, and it's really becoming what we, what we had set out to, to, yeah. to, to, to do, but I would and I imagine, Gary. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can only imagine the massive undertaking of organizing all of this. So you have a committee, you're the chairperson. Uh, tell us what is special about this year's Agric show. Yeah, okay. Well, first of all, the show gets, uh, gets going on Friday, this Friday, uh, April 27th, uh, with the opening ceremony at, at 3 p.m. Um, and that goes for about an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half. Um, the Friday event, though, is our gates are open, um, so we get a lot of families and students visiting the showgrounds free of cost. Um, we start charging on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So if you want to look at some of the early bird special or even visit the garden, um, so you could come out with, with your family on Friday to walk around before the opening ceremony. Um, on Saturday morning, uh, we get into, into the show itself. And Sunday, there is quite a bit of activities going on. Mm -hmm. um, before we get into the trade part with the telephone and, yeah. <laughs> and everything else, we, as you mentioned, we we put in a number of um, what we would consider family entertainment zone, mm -hmm. um, where you would be able to do zip lining on the showground. Wow. Zip so, lining, right? Yep. Be able, we will have um, two companies this year. As a matter of fact, uh, we have Cape Tubing that BZ, and we have. Uh, another group out of Bokawina National Park that will be setting up zip line, so you'll be able to rappel from tree to tree uh -huh. on the showgrounds, which should be Stepping very it up. right. Mm -hmm. um, I like it. There's a uh, there's a group um, that you're able to uh, set up a group of friends, and then you go into an area to do paintball. Uh, so you split up into teams and, and challenge each other. Uh, bouncy houses, um, trampolines. Uh, there's the, the, the small carousel rides that, yeah. that the kids would be able to go on. Of course, we have two large mechanical groups that set up on, on opposite sides of each other. There's a petting zoo. Um, there is an on-site garden that you could take your family, you could take your kids to see what tomato looks like when it's growing. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be able to see the tomato seedlings and you'll be able to see the tomato plant in full production. Mm -hmm. uh, cabbage, cucumber, whatever it is you could think about, it will be growing on the showgrounds. This year, again, uh, we're adding, we're moving from not just the production, there'll be an on-site market. Mm -hmm. Just wow. like you go to the market on Saturday, you'll be able to walk <laughs> into, into um, the market pavilion and actually shop for produce. We have a large... Right from the farmers. Right. right. We have six farmer organizations from across the country, some um, including Mascal and Bomba here in the Belize district, Valley of Peace, and a few other groups in Cayo that will be setting up their produce straight from the farm and you'll be able to do that. We also have a large number of people who produce and sell <coughs> food on the showgrounds. What would traditionally happen is that they would have to go to the market outside of the grounds, purchase the produce, bring it, and then prepare it on the grounds. 
what they could do now is just go to the market, <laughs> on the showhouse, <laughs> go back to their stalls, right, <laughs> produce the food and then sell it to the public. So yeah. there's, there's quite a bit. You'll also have the hydroponics display, you said? Right. Um, the, the, the district agriculture stations are mm -hmm. putting together various models um, which they bring to the showgrounds and, and as visitors pass through, they will explain and demonstrate what, what you're able to do with these models mm -hmm. in very confined and very tight spaces. And you said something about the canoe race? They, right. Um, there is also a number of uh, sport-related activities that is associated with this show. Um, there's a canoe race uh, on Saturday morning from the Iguana, um, Iguana Creek Bridge that is going to Spanish Lookout. That starts at 9.30 a.m. in the morning and it finishes just around 11, 11.30 um, a.m. on the showgrounds. So where, where, um, where you would cross the Rowing Creek Bridge, um, right down at the bottom, they come from the Belize River up the creek and, and the finish line is actually on the, the line for the showgrounds. Um, at the same time, you have um, the group out of Spanish, uh, Spanish Lookout, for example, with the motocross. They will be doing their demonstrations as well, racing, and then the championship on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, then to top it off, uh, and this is the one Marlene is waiting to hear, yeah. uh, the rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rodeo gets going. The rodeo gets going on on Sunday. Um, we are pushing it a little to make it uh, an even grander, grander event. Um, we're starting bigger, with bigger animals. Bigger animals, <laughs> but we're starting with a horse parade oh. on Sunday to to, to to lead off the um, the rodeo. So we have we have everybody line up um, at one of our gates, mm -hmm. and the horses that will be participating in the event uh, will actually be parading. Mm -hmm. uh, you know they have some of these fancy horses that oh, yeah. right, step. right. Oh, yes, um, yes. It's it's going to be about a mile or so long, so everybody would would get an opportunity to see that, um, and they would parade with the flags and everything, and they parade into the arena. Um, from that, you go into the national anthem, and then there's what, the, what, what is called a cowboy prayer for safety and everything <laughs> else. Right after that, then we get into the main event. There are 20 bulls that, that are available on the uh, 20 rides that will be available on that day, and we go into a whole list of program that starts at 1 p.m. and goes till about 4 or 5 in the evening. You know, this, the National Culture and Trade Show is like Christmas. We have it and we forget the reason for Does it. Does that make me Santa Claus? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah make me Santa Claus. Where are you? Right. So, yeah. so on Monday I go and, I go and leave there. <laughs> you know, we, we, we tend to forget the reason why we're there. Yeah. Um, my question is, how do you measure a success from the agricultural side? Because uh, as, as much as CEO, you said that the bar is going to be in the back, the bar is going to be in front of people's mind, and the rides are going to be second. And maybe if you're attracted to the uh, rodeo, maybe that is going to be there. But the commercial forces that are there are going to make sure that you're there to party and to see their produce. How do you measure, after the event is finished, say, that was a success for agriculture? One of the, one of the most uh, um, walk through boots is actually uh, the ministry's extension boot, where we have displays from the various districts. Um, so yes, you do have your, 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 your crowd that will go there for a cell phone or will go there for the party and the rest of it, and everybody has their zones, but the main street is now truly trade, commercial, and uh, down at the, the north end of the um, ground, it's all agriculture. The livestock display is a big uh, um, attraction. Yeah. Um, the, the rodeo, as, as Gary said, and I, I should add that there's a kid's rodeo on Saturday nice. when they do the, the judging of the animals, etc. So the livestock display is there. That's a, a major attraction. The garden that we, we started a few years ago has become far more um, attractive. And there's a little trick to that, too. Uh, Gary did the right thing of putting shade cloth over the entire garden, so people <laughs> run in there to, uh, to get away from the sun. Huh? <laughs> but but beyond that, the questions are, are there. The kids are interested, um, and as I said, our our um, agriculture um, extension boot, we have the EU actually this year invested in in actually building permanent mm -hmm. uh, uh, installations there. So we're having more and more. The sugar industry will be out there enforce but how, how do you know that these things that you set up the main street how do you know that these attractions how do you know that they were successful in terms of what you want to achieve because uh, and i'll put it this way and because we don't do market surveys if, if that's what uh, we don't so i can't i, I can't you. give you that but i will tell you why because we have an increasing number of agriculture oriented enterprises coming out to the show 
Okay. Those that started coming out a few years ago remain, and we keep on adding every year. Um, we're beginning to run into a little space crunch, to be very honest, and you which don't is a good take, thing. And you don't want to take for each. No, no, no. They're one of our partners. Yeah? <laughs> All right, we've got to wrap up the segment, guys. Just very quickly, what time does the showgrounds open on Saturday and Sunday? All right, the showgrounds, uh, the gates open at 5.30 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Um, Friday and Saturday, we go until 10 p.m. And then on Sunday, as is tradition, at 6 p.m. in the evening, everything basically shuts, off. shuts down. Transport and security. Transport and security. Um, we have uh, the Belize Police Department. Um, they have an entire team set up. Okay. Um, they're actually having a, a, a strategy meeting and, and walk through today at the showgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, the Belmapan Traffic um, Department, uh, we have had a number of meetings with them. They are on board. They, will, they, have, um, they have a plan. Um, they have been working on this for a number of weeks. Uh, the entire uh, highway surrounding the showgrounds will be well coordinated. We have put in a number of um, control gates on the showgrounds to, to, to allow traffic to move easy in and out of the, and the riverside as well. Right. Um, so, um, uh, almost four months of preparation. Um, we are down to and the last few 40, days. 40,000 people. Right. Um, That's a right. Um, in total, when you look at the amount of uh, guests. Um, vendors and everything you're looking at uh, a little over 40,000 people yeah. on the showgrounds over the two days so all right and we, we continue our, our investments there um, we have new pavilions going up this year mm -hmm. so the experience will be better we've finally managed to open up the main street mm -hmm. which used to be a tunnel a couple of mm -hmm. years ago now it's quite big and quite open so we need to see you guys and 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 everybody from the from the Next studio time. out there on on Saturday and Sunday all right. Well, thank you for coming in and having this conversation. We appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, there is the trade aspect of the show. And we're going to be talking to representatives of Smart Belize about the special deals yeah. you can get this weekend. So stay tuned. <laughs>